Hirokashi is an ugly, lonely virgin boy who by luck finds himself in a situation where he has to date the hottest and freakiest girl in his school. He later finds himself in situations where the hottest girls in his school want to get cultured with him. But luckily enough, Harukashi is an honest guy who only wants to date one girl. But before any of this, Harukashi Nuisaki, a pathetic and shy guy, had always been attracted to Akio Kosaka, an admirable, hot girl with good grades and huge melons, ever since he started his first year of high school. Since they were currently in the same class, he couldn't help but notice the extent of his feelings. Shinuosaki mustered his courage and finally confessed his feelings to Kosaka after school, telling her that he would like her to be his girlfriend. Luckily, Kosaka accepted him. He was ecstatic when she accepted him. He discovered that his first girlfriend was a strange person when she told him that she would learn 48 baby-making positions. The following day after school, Shinosaki's childhood friend, Shizuku Ariyama, and Kanata dragged him with them on their way home. The following day, as Shinosaki was still in disbelief and daydreamed about dating the admirable Kosaka, she appeared beside him, telling him that there were so many things she had to know about him. He replied that she could ask him anything. She asked him what type of fetishes he had. He was shocked by the question and then replied that he was just an ordinary guy. During lunch, their teacher asked Kosaka to return a bunch of books to the library. Chinuosaki offered to help her as she picked up the books. He turned to her, and he saw her big melons resting on top of the books. After returning the books, they had lunch together. Classes were over and Kosaka heard her classmates complain about whether a boy they liked would ever love them. She tried giving them advice, but they gasped and told her they would figure something out. She walked out of the classroom after hearing them saying she was hard to relate to and sadly wondered whether Chinuosaki thought of her that way. Fortunately, she bumped into him, and he told her to walk home with him. In class, Kosaka noticed that Chinuosaki looked very tired and asked him about it. Chinuosaki replied that he had studied the previous night. Shizuku Ariyama peeped into the classroom, making a silly comment. Chinuosaki ran to her in the hallway and Kosaka followed. When she saw the boy's hand draped on her shoulder, Kasaka asked who she was and Shinuosaki replied that she was his childhood friend, Shizuku Hariyama. Hariyama wondered if she was Shinuosaki's girlfriend, and he replied, just as Kasaka introduced himself. She started telling Kosaka about their previous encounters, making her jealous. They met again in the hallway, and Shizuku was in Shinuosaki's bag. The couple went out on a date, and Shizuku was with them, which got Haru irritated. The next day, she called Haru out of class, and Kosaka followed. Haru was annoyed by her and reminded her of what she had said the previous day about not imposing on their business. She replied that she was bored, and he asked her how a third-year student could be bored. She excitedly told him that if he didn't pay attention to her, she would just have to pay attention to Akio Kosaka. She said as she grabbed Aki's huge melons and squeezed them, Haru had to drag her away from him while telling her to stay out of their business. She told them that they thought she was imposing because their relationship was not intense, making hand gestures, meaning they needed to have some plot. It was time to return to their homes. Shinuosaki received a message from Akio Kosaka, telling him to meet her in the storage room. As he opened the storage door, he was surprised to see Akio Kosaka surrounded by things that could make them get cultured. Since Shinuosaki wasn't into any of those things, the couple didn't have any plot. As they walked in the hallways, Akio started thinking that they needed to quickly make their relationship intense. So she ran after him and hugged him from behind, pressing her melons to his body, which caused them to land on the ground with her on top of him, causing him to make happy noises. Once he regained himself, he told her not to worry about what Uriyama said about them, whether their relationship was intense or not. It was something they would decide, she agreed. Hirokashi sat on his bed, wondering if Akio Kosaka was all right, since they had run in the rain after school. Suddenly, his little sister appeared at his bedroom door and entered trying to get Akio's attention. However, she became jealous and sad when he confessed that he had a girlfriend. At school, Chinasaki noticed Kanata peeping into his class. He went to the hallway to confront her, suspiciously asking if she had come for Akio. She lied, replying that she was looking for Shizuku in one of the year three classes. Suddenly, Kusaka walked towards them and asked him who the girl was. He introduced her as his little sister, Kanata. Kanata stared at her, thinking she was a 10 out of 10 baddie. Kosaka introduced herself to Kanata, and they exchanged introductions. Upon hearing her name, Kanata became jealous and started telling Horukashi things to make her jealous. 
As the couple was sitting on the rooftop clearing up the misunderstanding, Kanata saw them. Thinking that they were getting very close, distracted them and tried taking her brother's hand, pushing Kosaka in the process. When Horokashi turned to Kosaka, she apologized. He asked her why she was apologizing, and she replied that it was because she had covered her rice cakes while falling. Kanata apologized to Kosaka, and they made up. Later in class, Kosaka gave a speech inspiring the students to clean up their campus. As they were cleaning, Kosaka told Horukashi to release the gas from the can before throwing it. Horukashi then saw Ariyama trying to throw away a can. He told her the same thing Kosaka had told him, but Ariyama took it the wrong way and tried to get cultured with him, but he walked away before she could continue. The following day, Kosaka attempted to make a lunchbox for her boyfriend, Horukashi. During lunch, Ariyama joined them and started eating her lunch. Kosaka saw her food and asked whether it was a homemade lunchbox. She replied and Kosaka begged her to teach her how to cook. As she was teaching her, Harukashi went to the men's room. When he was going back to the kitchen, he heard them talking and wondered what they were doing. As he began imagining Ariyama removing Kosaka's underwear, leaving her in nothing but her rice cakes on display, they set the table after they were done cooking. He took a first bite of the food and told Kosaka that the food slapped, saying she nailed it. They had dessert, and he escorted Kosaka home. Kosaka told her parents that her boyfriend was coming to visit. Her mother sent her to buy foodstuffs for dinner while her father went for a walk. Kosaka arrived early and was forced to chat with Kosaka's mother as she was showing him Kosaka's baby pictures. Her husband returned and watched them through the window. He started to remember when Kosaka was a baby, doing simple things while playing and her mother always thinking in a cultured way. He then told himself that he was not so sure whether her gifted education was a good thing or a bad thing. He looked back and noticed they were gone, and his daughter appeared. She found her mother and Haru in the kitchen, then he met her father. After dinner, Kosaka's father touched his shoulder, telling him that he thought both of them were really having a hard time. Kosaka's mother told them that they are cultured, and they replied telling her no. Then Kosaka's father told Haru to promise that he would take care of Akio. Akio's father returned from work to find his wife and daughter chatting. When he asked them what they were doing, the mother replied that she was advising Akio since she was going on her first date with Haru, going to the movie theater. While shaking her big melons, she told Akio to get closer to Haru and give him everything she had. On their date, they watched a romantic movie and then went for dinner. On the way home, he told her that he had fun, making her realize that she was too consumed with her research and forgot to have fun. He noticed how sad she was and promised her another date, to see the cherry blossoms. She was ecstatic and started planning a picnic for them. The following morning, she almost collapsed in the hallways due to exhaustion. Haru caught her, and she explained that she didn't sleep because she was planning for their picnic. He took her to the nurse's office to rest for a while. The nurse told them that it was a fever. Lying on the bed, she apologized to him and promised that she would get better. He told her not to worry and that she should take some fluids in the meantime. Kosaka made happy noises as she chugged the drink, spilling it on herself purposely, and her mother took her home. On their planned date day, they were excited. However, when they got to the cherry trees, they unfortunately found that the blossoms had fallen, dampening their mood. She was shaking in anger, and he told her that they could always do it again the following year. The teacher introduced a new female transfer student, Rina Saijo, transferring from Shiragum Girls Academy. She met Akiho and Haruka, and told them that she wanted to know how to deepen a friendship with the opposite gender since she only had experience with other girls. So she happily raised her hands for Haruka to touch her melons. But Haruka panicked and told her that it wasn't okay. My disappointment is immeasurable. Saijo then continued to ask Haruka if he didn't want to touch her melons. Later she learned that Akio and Haruka were together. Akio then took her to the nurse and told her to teach her everything about boys. Haruka screamed, saying it was all wrong. They continued hanging out, teaching her about men. Suddenly, Oriyama walked towards them telling Haruka that he was with another pretty girl. When she was told that Seijo was studying men, she touched her melons and told her to seduce her with her melons. Seijo told her that she wanted to see the reference. Oriyama started shaking her melons, and she compared them with Seijo's. She started crying when she noticed her melons were small. After school, Seijo asked if she could consider Akio and Haruka her friends. When they accepted, she was happy together with Akio. The next day at school, Haru noticed that Seijo was sad. When he asked her what was bothering her, she explained that her friend from Shiragum didn't want to be friends with her anymore. 
Akio appeared and told her that she would always be her friend and would never leave her. Soijo then suggested that they go to the zoo and should invite Shizuku Ariyama as well. Meanwhile, Akio's parents decided to go to the zoo just like in old times. At the zoo, the kids were going around looking at different types of animals. They came across a dog, and the dog walked towards them and raised its leg, showing them its private area. Upon seeing the dog's sausage, the girls started comparing it to Haruka's sausage. What? Meanwhile, Akio's parents met Sakicho and her friend, who said they were curious about the mating habits of the wonderful creatures. Then, Sakicho heard someone saying she was naughty, and she ran off crying. Then they heard a little girl crying. Akio's mother went to comfort her, and just when her husband thought she had it, she started telling the child about mating. The husband shouted, asking whether someone was searching for a missing child. Akio's parents went back home, the wife supporting her husband since he hurt his leg. Meanwhile, Seijo and Shizuku parted ways with Haru and Akio. Seijo was very happy. Her mother had finally bought her a phone. She excitedly told them that she could now do all the fun stuff her classmates had been doing on her phone. Haruka replied that she was gonna love it. She also told them that she had mastered how to make phone calls. Akio told her to show her. Sojo called her, asking what panties she was wearing, and she replied, while Haruka shouted at them, telling them not to answer that. Then Seijo walked close to Horu, stating the fact that his works no matter where he uses it. He asked whether she was talking about his phone reception, and she replied. Haru looked at her phone while telling her that maybe there was something blocking the signal. Seijo covered her melons with her hands while telling him that they always get in the way, and it's embarrassing. He replied, yelling at her that they were talking about phone reception. Then she asked him to show her how to take a selfie, and he showed her how to. When Haru and Akiho were alone, she told him that she heard that when a lover lifts their partner's chin, it makes their heart pound, and that they should try it out. She crossed her arms and tilted her head as he did, and then asked whether his heart was pounding. He replied that something was pounding. She then told him she heard that a girlfriend who can sense her lover's feelings without saying a word is exceptional, and he agreed with her. Then she told him to refrain from speaking to her for the remainder of the day. Whenever he was in need of something, Akiho would appear with it, including lunch and carrying his book, which made other students look at Akio as the bad guy. Suddenly, the three girls were all trying to sense Haru so that they could become exceptional. After classes, he asked Kosaka as she wanted to walk home with him, but she replied that she had a class representative meeting. Haruka then left. At the meeting, whenever she tried to suggest something, their leader blocked her. The following day, the couple and Shizuku Ariyama were standing in the hallways when Kosaka started getting hiccups. Haru asked if there was anything she could do to help. Ariyama started teasing him, saying he was trying to think of ways to get cultured. He replied that he was just looking for ways to stop the hiccups. He told her to try hopping like a bunny, and she began hopping. Her melons bounced up and down, making Shizuku gasp and touch her melons. Akiho and Haru were in a science lab with Ariyama hiding in the locker. Suddenly, she started hearing happy noises, making her think the couple was having a plot in the science lab. Her plan to scare them got disrupted as she fell out of the locker unprepared. She asked them why they were shaking so much. He replied that it was due to his nervousness. Then Akio sneezed and realized that her hiccups were gone. As they walked out of the lab, Oriyama started sneezing. He gave her water to drink, instructing her in a cultured way. Once she drank the water, she showed him by sticking her tongue out. Horu told her that he didn't have to show him because he believed her. Meanwhile, Kanata and Sekicho went to the market. Kanata mistakenly placed a box of condoms in a chocolate section, making Seijo buy it, shocking the salesman as she explained that she just couldn't wait to take it to school. Kasaka and Horu were walking to school together. At the gate, they met a group of girls surrounding one of their classmates, Saya Hashikawa, as they yelled his name. Horu became insecure as he knew Saya was popular with girls, and he was paranoid that Kosaka would become infatuated with him like all the other girls. Just as he thought he was overthinking it, he found Akio in the hallways with Saya, which drove him nuts. He ended up asking Ariyama about the appropriate friendship behavior and what's not. Saicho walked to them, replying that it was easy. Oriyama told her that all he needed to do was confirm the facts. When Haru went to find out what was going on, Saya explained that he asked for advice from Akio on making friends of his gender, since he's only friends with boys, so Saya and Akio became friends. Akio and Haru were staring at the decorated tree, as it was the time for Tanabata celebrations. 
Students wrote their wishes on a paper and hung it on the tree. Suddenly, they heard a commotion and realized it was Sayo with a group of girls who seemed mesmerized by him counting the stars. Akio became insecure about Haru and Saida's friendship. During PE class, Hosaka was hopping, making her melons bounce. Unfortunately, Haru was caught staring, and she told him it was okay to shamelessly stare. Haru complained about being bad at sports. Saya offered to help him learn how to grip the batting stick. As Kusaka was returning from where the PE teacher had sent her, she saw Haru and Sidiya in a corner. From her angle, it looked like both Sidiya and Haru were playing with Haru's sausage, while he was only teaching Haru how to hold a bat. When she asked what was going on, Haru explained that he would show her properly the following day. On the day of the class games, Kusaka couldn't find Haru and assumed he was having a plot with Saya. She panicked and started looking for him. Meanwhile, Ekiho had met his sister, who was also participating in the game. Saijo ran towards them with her melons bouncing as she excitedly told Kanata that she would watch her game. Kosaka finally found him and the games began. Haru hit the ball twice, the first time almost hitting Saijo, and the second time the ball hit Saya in the groin. After they lost the game, he told Kosaka that he got Saya to help him so that he could be able to hit the ball just once to look cool in front of her. She was happy that he did it all for her. Kosaka and Horo were taking a stroll in the park when they came across a hairy dog. They wondered what tricks it had, and Kosaka asked it to beg. The dog put its head in her skirt, trying to lick her rice cake, which made them wonder who the owner was. Then Seijo ran to them, calling the dog's name. At school, they announced the school's camping trip. They got off the bus and were hiking up the mountain. Horo noticed that Seijo was tired, so they decided to rest. He told her that it could be hard on one's curves and thighs when they'd poke it out much. She agreed, saying she had never experienced something like it before, and that it must be how it feels when it's one's first time. He looked at her, wondering why she was smiling about it. Meanwhile, at the school campus, Seijo hugged a boy from the back, thinking it was Horu. When he faced her, she screamed and remembered that he was on the school's camping trip. Bruh. Ekiho's father was missing her daughter, thinking it was lonely when she wasn't at home. His wife touched his shoulder as she told him that she was satisfied with his size. He replied that it wasn't what he was thinking about, but he was just thinking that Akio was going to grow up and be a wife one day. She told him she would always be there to help him make it through. On the camping trip, it was decided that there would be a test of courage. As the couple was walking in the forest, they came across a student representative of class 4 who was trying to distract them while her friends scared them. The two boys and the girl hiding in the bushes thought it was time and the boy threw something at them. It accidentally landed in between her melons. Akio and Haru suddenly heard Saijo's cry, and they found her looking terrified. As they stood in the middle of the bushes, another person appeared, scaring them. Back in their rooms, Akio, Igarashi, and the Class 4 representative were taking a bath. When they asked Igarashi whether she does night visits, she yelled, telling them to leave her alone. In bed, Akio was thinking that if Haru goes for a night visit, she will not be timid, since she had gathered all her knowledge for a time like it. Meanwhile, Haru was standing right outside of her room. Then he knocked, and they both walked out into the forest. After the camping trip, students at the school changed. They were always with their partners. Igarashi saw a couple walking out of a classroom, talking like they had just had a workout. She wondered what was wrong with the students as she entered the same class and opened a locker. She found the class four representative touching herself. Just as she was about to explain herself, she heard other people approaching, and she dragged Igarashi into the locker so they could watch them having a private moment. They suddenly saw Haru with a little girl, and they recognized him as Kosaka's boyfriend. The little girl squatted in front of him, making them think they were getting cultured. Then they saw that he creamed on her face, but it was just milk. Igarashi started struggling to get out of the locker, but her friend wasn't having it. Haru suddenly opened the locker as he was searching for something to wipe his little sister's face, and he introduced his little sister when he realized what they were thinking. Kanata purposely spoke like they were about to get cultured, making Igarashi run off screaming. He turned to Shikamore, asking whether she got it. She replied that his secret was safe with her. Meanwhile, Igarashi was disgusted by Haru and was determined to expose him. She exited the lady's room and called Haru in the hallway, trying to get him to write an apology. When she turned, the edge of her skirt was stuck to her underwear, displaying her panties. He tried to tell her, and she took it the wrong way, starting to accuse him falsely. But when she noticed, she realized that he was just trying to tell her, and that he was just an awkward guy. 
After her swimming lessons, Kasaka realized that she had forgotten to wear panties. Unfortunately, she met Haru, who was in a hurry to go buy the chocolate bread she loved. Then he told her that they should eat in the garden. While in the garden, Haru felt bad that he had forcefully dragged her out there and didn't want her to do things she wasn't comfortable with. She replied that she wanted to do more. When he asked her what more they could do when they had just recently started holding hands, she looked and told him that she would show herself to him, and he should understand that she wasn't wearing panties. She was about to lift her skirt to show him, but he shook his head, telling her that it wasn't the reason he brought her out to have lunch. <laughs> then he saw Shikamore in the bushes. She apologized, saying she couldn't believe she had done it again. After PE class, Haru offered to help Kosaka put back the equipment in the storeroom. As she was walking in with a net, she fell and got tangled up. The couple was trying to untangle her when they heard the door get locked from outside. Saijo grabbed Haruka, pushing his face between her melons, while crying that it was dark and she was scared. Haruka found the light switch and saw the girls lying in a complicated position. Suddenly, Saijo's guards burst the doors open and ground Haruka while he pleaded, telling them it wasn't what it looked like. Haru was alone since Kosako was at the hospital with her father. When Shizuku noticed, she took advantage of the situation and told him that they should walk around, saying she missed him since he went on the camping trip. They went shopping, had dinner, and then went to the cinema. As they were heading home, she invited him to her house, saying her parents weren't home. Haru agreed easily. When they arrived at her house, she told him to give her a minute to go change. Haru was already regretting the idea when he heard Shizuku cry for help. He ran to her and asked if there were robbers when he saw her hands and legs in handcuffs. She explained that she thought it would be better if they got closer. Unfortunately, the key disappeared. He was about to start looking for the keys when she told him that she needed to pee. He searched for the key but couldn't find it. He fed her, and then she told him to brush her teeth. She then asked him to carry her to her room. They sat on the bed, and she told him that when he helped her, it reminded her of when they were kids comforting her till she stopped crying. He replied that he was glad he was there. She lays her head on his shoulder while telling him that she appreciates that. Haru told her that the next time she decides to sweet-talk him, she shouldn't go through all that. As he pushed her, she fell on the bed giggling. Haru told her it was time to start looking for the keys, then he suddenly saw a key print on her back pocket. He asked in disbelief if it couldn't possibly be the key. She apologized and told him to get it. Just as he put his hand in her pocket, happy noises filled the room. He got annoyed and told her to shut up. The following day at school, Akio was thinking of making something for Haru to apologize for missing their date. She suddenly heard Haru and Ariyama talking about the cooking class and how delicious Ariyama's special steak burger was. Upon hearing how he liked Ariyama's burger, she was determined to make him delicious food. She read lots of cookbooks and made a burnt omelet for him. She told him not to worry, saying she was good at cooking while chopping vegetables. Then she got distracted when Sia seductively called Haru's name telling him that his tip looked like it was twitching everywhere as he grabbed the knife in Haru's hand. She stared at them while the curtains caught fire. Meanwhile, Saya grabbed Haru's waist and started grinding Haru's rice cakes on his sausage. Haru was trying to warn Akio about the fire but couldn't come up with the correct words because she took them wrongly. Akio told Rina to taste her food and she collapsed after some time. Akio was sad when Haru asked to taste it. She refused in fear of him getting sick and he told her she would take care of him if he got sick. Days until they started writing exams, Horu tried to read but couldn't understand anything. So, Akio began explaining it to him in a weird way. He told her that he would figure it out. Luckily, Sidia appeared, sitting next to him. He explained it to him, and he understood. He returned to the building and was met with a group of girls asking Saijo to teach them while shaking their melons. As he was lost in thought, Wondering whether Seijo would get good grades, he heard his sister call from behind, asking him to teach her. Then her friend, Seiko, walked towards them, admiring their relationship. She told them she wanted him to teach her as well. At their house, Sekicho didn't show up. Haru was about to get a book when she offered to get it, but she couldn't reach the top shelf. Haru picked her up and put her down. She grabbed the book and thanked him. When he turned to look at her, she blushed and ran out of the room yelling. Sakito was working in an ice cream shop when Shizuku walked in and ordered an ice cream while crying, making her wonder whether she said something wrong. Then Sia walked in, and she wondered whether she was the one making everything seem all cultured and customers were just having their normal day. Then Horu walked in, and he recognized him. 
When he started describing what he wanted to buy, she hid behind the counter, replying that she wasn't ready to do that kind of stuff. The following day after school, Akio tried to wake Haru up. She even tricked him, saying he'd get a glimpse of her melons, but he wouldn't budge. So she just slept on a desk next to him. Suddenly, he woke up screaming, then he saw Kosaka beside him. He patted her head, and then she woke up. As they were walking in the hallway, he apologized for touching her without her permission. Meanwhile, Igarashi woke Shirogom, and she asked her for something to wipe herself with. Thinking she was talking about the drool on her face, she gave her a cloth. Shigurum started explaining as she wiped her rice cake that she had a dream, and she creamed it herself. During an art class, the students were taken outside to draw. When Akio saw Haru with Saya, she told him to come with her. They sat down at a distance from Saya and continued drawing. He couldn't draw anything, so he decided to use a model. When it didn't work out with Ariyama and Saijo, Akio offered to be his model. He sat down and looked up at her, remembering that all he could do was stare at her back then. He recalled all the moments they had, and he told her he loved her without knowing. She admitted that she loved him too. Will Horu and Akio finally date, or is this just the beginning of another love triangle? If you have reached this far, let's confuse the fake fans by commenting RIP Horu.